If you take your voting cues from Donald Trump, or if you don't, you'll want to hear what he has to say about a key race in Colorado, triggered by the Republican who said this. I don't think Donald Trump should run again. A Democratic elections clerk is sidelined for making a series of mistakes ahead of election day. The gray area of using gray water to save money and water on landscape irrigation. And an artist who came to Colorado from Iraq is getting noticed on the international art scene. All that is next. Happy ballot drop day to all who celebrate. On this day that ballots went out in the mail to Colorado voters, the most powerful person in American politics weighed in on a key race here. Former President Donald Trump launched a string of insults at Republican Senate nominee Joe O'Day for being insufficiently loyal to Trump and his ideas. O'Day has said that he would vote for Trump again if Trump is the Republican nominee, but O'Day reinforced over the weekend that he'd prefer somebody else. And we need to move the country forward. I don't think Donald Trump should run again. I'm going to actively, I'm going to actively campaign against Donald Trump uh, and make sure that we've got four or five really great Republicans right now, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott. They can run and serve for eight years. I'm going to do my job as a U.S. senator to make sure that they have good campaigns in the primary here so we have a good selection of candidates for 2024. And you have heard O'Day say pretty much the same thing here on Nine News, but choosing to say it on national television over the weekend certainly suggests that O'Day thinks that he has more to be gained in votes and in fundraising from taking a public shot at Trump, more than he would have to lose in votes from Trump supporting Republicans in Colorado. So today, Trump called O'Day a rhino, a Republican in name only, accused him of saying slightly nasty things, told O'Day, quote, MAGA doesn't vote for stupid people with big mouths. Most Colorado Republicans polled recently said they would vote for Trump again. The poll did not specifically ask if they would do so happily or if they would vote for Trump grudgingly, as O'Day has said he would do. An Emerson College poll found 77% of Colorado Republicans would vote for Trump in 2024 if Trump ran against Biden again. Only 30% of Colorado's unaffiliated voters said they would vote for Trump over Biden. Joe O'Day and incumbent Democratic Senator Michael Bennett will debate here on Nine News the night of October 28th. It will cap off our series of six debates we are holding this month, following our debates for Colorado's 7th Congressional District and all of the other statewide offices, with the exception of Governor. The full schedule of debates is on NineNews.com. And you can see our extended in-depth interviews with both O'Day and Bennett on NineNews.com, or they're up right now on the next YouTube channel. We have been reporting on some recent mistakes by county election clerks in Denver and Arapahoe County and the 30,000 voter registration reminders that went to ineligible voters from the Secretary of State's office. Well, now a string of errors by the Democratic clerk down in Pueblo has caused the Democratic Secretary of State to put somebody else in charge of Pueblo's elections. The latest follow-up from Clerk Bo Ortiz's office is marking the general election ballots as primary ballots on that tear-off tab up top. The Secretary of State's office says the rest of the ballot is still legally valid, so there's no need for them to be reprinted. But the state's sending an election supervisor down to Pueblo after what they called multiple mistakes by Clerk Ortiz's office. Ortiz was on his way out of the elections business anyway. He got smoked two to one in a Democratic primary earlier this year, so he's in the final months of his fourth term. Colorado's Taxpayer Bill of Rights is causing some real contortions by Democrats this year who would like to get credit for the big tax refunds we got. The same tax refunds the Democrats tried to kill permanently but couldn't. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger found Tabor claims starring in ads on both sides of the highly competitive 8th Congressional District in Adams and Weld Counties. You know that meme where Spider-Man is pointing a finger at Spider-Man? That's kind of happening in these two political ads in Congressional District 8. Here's an ad that attacks Democrat Yadira Caraveo. It supports Republican Barbara Kirkmeyer. It's paid for by the National Republican Congressional Committee in Washington, D.C. Caraveo even pushed to eliminate Tabor, ending your tax refund. And here's an ad Caraveo paid for, claiming Kirkmeyer is also against your tax refund. But Barbara Kirkmeyer voted no instead. Like I said, kind of like Spider-Man. The claim in the ad that attacks Caraveo is true. She supported a 2019 ballot issue to let the state keep Tabor refunds. If her side had won, it didn't, you would no longer get Tabor refunds. But on the other side, Caraveo's ad also gives her credit for getting you a bigger refund. 
That could be yes or no, depending on your income level. She supported a bill that resulted in us receiving part of next year's Tabor refund early, prior to the November election. That's why we got checks from the state for $750 or $1,500. Was it bigger? For low-income earners, yeah. For people with high incomes, no. Instead of the amount of the refund increasing based on income level, the check we got was the same, no matter how much you make. During her debate with Kirkmeyer on Nine News last week, Caraveo talked about how Tabor restricts funding for education. Any regrets on trying to take away Tabor refunds? I think that it really affects the health of children, but it is the law of the land, and so I will follow that law. Now, back to more Spider-Man. But Barbara Kirkmeyer voted no instead. Regarding the Tabor refund, this claim is accurate in that she voted no on the bill that sent out some of your Tabor refund early and equally, no matter your income level. But she did not vote no on your refund. She voted no on changing how it was coming back to you. The National Republican Congressional Committee ad attacking Caraveo also touches a topic we've already covered and conveniently uses a stat I showed you except the ad does not provide the correct context. Here's the part of the ad. The ad tries to blame Caraveo for 12,000 oil and gas jobs being lost in Colorado, blame based on a Caraveo bill that changed how oil and gas is regulated in the state. But that number is true. It just does not decipher between that bill, COVID, and any other issue that might have impacted oil and gas since 2019. And I want to show you some other stats real quick. Yeah. It doesn't show the other stats we talked about in the story that oil and gas friendly states, Texas, Alaska, and Wyoming, also have lost oil and gas jobs. Texas, if they're going to show 12,000 here, they should show minus 78,000, which I know you asked Kirkmeyer about in the interview. Yeah, we talked about that in last week's debate. Why, why is she blaming Caraveo for lost jobs in Colorado when pro-oil and gas states also lost jobs? Mm -hmm. And basically her answer was, well, I don't know about those other states, but I'm definitely blaming her for Colorado. Sure. On the taxpayer bill of rights, mm -hmm. I feel like we've talked about this a million times, but it's important because it's people's money in the end. And, and folks should know that there's some really kind of disingenuous claims that are being made. If there's anything that you know from watching next about Tabor, it's the Tabor refund part of Tabor and that you get a vote on every possible tax increase because of Tabor. So if you know that much, you know enough about Tabor. My issue is we've done Tabor, we've done this. I don't know if I can keep going back to the well on truth tests in Congressional District 8. We've already had the debate. I, I maybe trust that you know enough now that you can make a decision, and I'll move on to other races to concentrate on my focus. The bottom line of it is pretty simple. Democrats tried to get rid of the Tabor refunds, but having lost that battle, they juiced them larger for lower income taxpayers this year. I mean, that's just a straight up factual claim. All right, Marshall, thank you. Hey, you all really came through for a nonprofit program that helps Coloradans escape domestic violence, bad situations from the city to our rural small towns. You helped out the Vistas program at Servicios de la Raza. They passed their $15,000 goal for last week's Word of Thanks microgiving campaign. Through 123 weeks of continuous giving, five bucks at a time, you've now raised $9.6 million for Colorado nonprofits. 123 ideas down. What about 124? Do you have an idea of who could use our help next? Anywhere in the state, any nonprofit, email me next at 9news.com, and I'll be back on Wednesday with a new idea. Their mission's pretty simple, finding a new home for used bikes. You know, all these kids that didn't have bikes, they got bikes. This nonprofit is looking for a new home itself to keep rolling. And an artist whose vision brought him from Iraq to Denver gains international attention. Next. Tonight's next question is about saving water. Stephen wrote in to ask if Coloradans are allowed to use gray water to water our lawns. Colorado's water plan predicts the state will see a significant shortage in the next few decades. So you've got cities and counties looking to cut down on water use by eyeing reuse, specifically new ways to use gray water. That is the used water that comes out of our washing machines and bathtubs, showers, bathroom sinks and such. How you can use it depends on where you live. If your local city or county supports gray water irrigation, you can technically use it to irrigate your lawn if you like. A few exceptions to this, though. According to the Gray Water Action, that's an organization that does education on this, gray water is best used for irrigating individual non-food plants, not on your vegetable garden. And most simple gray water irrigation systems are not ideal for doing your full lawn with that kind of volume. Another note, if you live in Denver, local ordinances say that you cannot let gray water run off your property or pool there. That's kind of tough to do when you're doing lawn watering. It's a good question, though. Keep the questions coming. Email us on anything Colorado, next at 9news.com, or use the hashtag HeyNext. 
A beautiful Monday night across downtown Denver. Still a little haze in the distance, but otherwise we are treated to so much sunshine. Temperatures pretty seasonal for us this afternoon. Sitting in the low to mid 60s across the metro area, the eastern plains. A little warmer out across the western slope in the 70s in Grand Junction. What you see is what you get. It's a pretty quiet day. The only exception, a couple of isolated showers near the San Juans. Tonight, however, temperatures will once again be cooling off quite a bit, especially into northern Colorado. We'll dip into the mid 30s here in Denver and then up in the mountains. 20s and 30s, of course. The freeze warnings, the frost advisories, not only are we dealing with them, but you can see much of the central plains stretching out across the Carolinas. They too are dealing with the bitter cold after a really strong cold front pushed across much of the country. That freeze warning in place around Fort Collins, Greeley, Eastern Weld County, and then further to the south, the frost advisory for temperatures as low as about 32 around Walsenburg, Trinidad, and uh, parts of Springfield too. So we'll kick out the cold air. We'll make way for this ridge of high pressure to build in, and that's going to be with us pretty much all week long. Our temperatures warm back to the upper 60s, low 70s, and then a bigger warm up as we head into the weekend. Right now, I do have another storm on the way. Sunday night into Monday could bring us some rain or snow. Oh, or snow. You or snow, me. Danielle Grant. You d heard me. She tucked that in at the end. She got the little snowflake there, too. Or snow. Uh -huh. All right, first time we heard that here. <laughs> Second Chance Bikes in Aurora fixes up donated bikes and gives them for free to people who need a bike. The nonprofit operates out of the East Bank Shopping Center for free. It's part of a tax write off deal with the city of Aurora. But now developers are moving in. And the bike shop is looking for a second chance of its own. We help out a lot, a lot of kids and people. My name is Ernie Clark. I'm the founder of Second Chance Bicycles. We've been giving away tons and tons of bikes through the years. We did it over 25 years. Okay. If they can give us a donation, fine. If they can't give us a donation, they get a bike anyway, because they need a bike. This is all volunteer. Everybody does not get paid here. No, I don't get paid either. No, it's not a profitable business at all, but we do like to give out bicycles to kids that really need them. You know, when I was growing up, my mom raised six of us, and we only had one bike. And whoever got up in the morning got the bike. So I didn't want to see a kid that, you know, that really needs a bike go without it. So we do a lot of, uh, a lot of good work. We just need another building to just keep this going. I don't want to give it up yet, but we don't have a building. We have to give it up. What they're going to do in here, they're going to uh, re remodel it. And this, this area here right now is going to be a pet store. Everything that's in this building on this side has to be moved out on uh, the 31st of October. I'm hoping that somebody has a building that they want to do a tax write-off and let us have it. I'm hoping that so we can keep on doing this for five more years. And I just want to keep on helping kids. You can see the faces, they're all lit up. Oh, oh, oh my bike, you know, I got a bike, I got a bike, I got a bike. And maybe somebody will come in and say, hey, I'll take this over. Thank you for your donation. So we'll see what happens. Never know who's watching or who you might share that story with on social media. Second Chance Bikes has been in operation since 2006. And since that time, they've donated more than 4,500 bikes to kids. An art school in Denver is getting international attention. Well, I wanted to really create a new generation of the old masters. We'll meet the man training up traditional artists in a city better known for modern art. That's next. Two years ago, we introduced you to an artist named Ali Ghassan, an immigrant from Iraq who became an American citizen during the pandemic. He also started an art academy in Denver. Now he's celebrating another landmark achievement that's getting worldwide attention. Byron Reed has the story. Every artistic line drawn by Dr. Allison Sheridan. My background is in medicine. I'm a radiologist. Means a break from her busy life. Oh, when I work, it's nine hours. Um, I also have three children. <laughs> <laughs> so I squeeze the art in. The angle looks perfect. Dr. Sheridan is squeezing in time as a student at Real Academy of Art in Denver. I joined about a month ago. A nonprofit art school that teaches a curriculum of drawing, painting, and sculpting techniques dating back to the Renaissance era. Sheridan says it's an art school she was looking for. I had done art in high school and then shifted to sciences. And I've been looking for an art class that fit with my schedule, but I also wanted an art class that was academic and would be rigorous. We design it for your journey to be a more uh, professional artist or master your skill. Ali Ghassan is the school's founder. 
He says he started the school in 2014 to make art accessible for everyone and share what he's learned as an artist from Iraq. I did not study just in Iraq. I study around the world. I moved from Italy to the San Petersburg, Russia. I bring all this knowledge here in Colorado to create. This is a school. It's a school. This is our certificate from uh, Art Renewal Center. That's getting international attention. Art Renewal Center, or ARC, is a worldwide vetting foundation for art schools to make sure students are learning strong technical skills that meet their curriculum standards. Gassan says his academy is the only art school in the state to receive the certification. Of course, this makes me so happy because I, I can say it's my seed when I planted it the first time. You see, you see, take care of it a lot and you see your seed has become more, become a bigger tree. This guy here. Dr. Sheridan hopes the academy will measure up to a good balance in her life. Inherent in my profession is a lot of measuring. So it's easy for me to, I'm like, oh, that's like three millimeters. And perfecting the skills of other artists, that's caught the eye of the world. They wanted to really learn mastering them craftsmanship to be a really good artist. For next. It's fun to know that fine art is still being taught and is still accessible. I'm Byron Reed. Our school focuses on realist art from the old masters like Michelangelo and Da Vinci through contemporary realists. There are only 75 art schools worldwide that have that recognition. We are back with a very good piece of feedback, a question about the way that water is used and reused. Feedback next. I love when you write in in real time to say, hey, did you guys get that right? Ted Hernandez wrote in tonight about our story on gray water reuse in Denver. Denver's rules don't allow it to pool or run off your property. And Ted says, how does City Park Golf Course use non-potable water? Is it gray water? That took us into a bit of an exploration into the city's uh, documents. And here's what we found. City Park Golf Course irrigates with recycled water. That's different than gray water. Recycled water has been treated a bit, but not to the point that it can be, you know, potable again. That's why City Park is allowed to water when some other places are not, because they're not using drinking water to do it. They're using that recycled water. Hey, just a heads up, the Broncos Chargers game is still 0-0 if you want to switch over and watch that if you enjoy pain. Matt, I'll see you here next time.